Well, guys, you've been pleading, you've been asking, you've been begging me to review Gunsmith Cats, and now I finally have a reason. Brett Weaver's in it! Weaver, to me, is an actor's actor, relying on his delivery and intensity than on his natural cadence or charm. He has a non-distinctive yet rough-sounding voice, which made him perfect for what the industry calls Walla, background voices usually pertaining to nameless thugs or crowds. His named roles are usually villain of the episode parts, or the occasional anti-hero. But for me, I know him as Nabashin. Nabashin, we're surrounded. Yeah, looks pretty bad. One of us needs to draw them off. Take this with you. That's some serious danger, man! The true tragedy of Brett Weaver is that the man has an excellent sense of timing and humor, which made him a natural for comedies. But the chips simply didn't fall that way. Still, I regard his Nabashin as his defining performance, balancing atypical anime roughness with out-of-control insanity. Today, though, we're going to be looking at his debut performance that is more in line with the types of roles he was usually cast in. Uh-uh. Oh. Jailbreak. Oh. Illegal weapons. You've been a bad boy, Washington. You're no cop. Who the hell are you? The name's Rally Vincent. Bounty hunter. Oh. They call me Minnie Mae. There. We're all introduced. Uh, do I even need to be here? Created by Kenichi Sonata. Pooping! Yes. That, Kenichi Sonata, Gunsmith Cats is what I consider a truly underappreciated gem. It's not that nobody's seen it and anyone who has pretty much echoes praise for it, it's that no one seems to bring it up anymore. It's been out of print for years and nearly a single petition has been launched to have Funimation rescue it. Besides being a fun watch, the series is really admirable, technically speaking. The animation and attention to detail are truly astounding, and though it doesn't match Soul Bianca in terms of richness or scope, it more than makes up for it with some of the best action scenes of the era. And yet, there are some sticking points that I'm gonna have to make fun of. This is the internet after all, and we can't have nice things now, can we? Let's face it, this is Kenichi Sonata. The man may be an A1 artist, but his stories are entirely something else. In fact, all things considered, it's a miracle that the anime adaptation came out the way it did, considering what the manga's like. Now, here's a montage of inappropriate shit! Still, the anime adaptation can't escape every instance of the uh, Sonata-ness, and we'll be there when it happens to mock it. Oh, and Honor Bright Weaver, of course. <laughs> Why else would we be looking at this? The Sonata-ness starts off on a subtle note as Rally hears that Washington, the guy she busted, didn't have any narcotics on him like the intel said he would. Besides bounty hunting, Rally is a gunsmith, hence the name, and guns, we've learned, is a forte of Sonatas. See ya. Come back soon. Boy, it's no wonder you're still single. No one asked you. You're not getting any younger, you know. Oh, shut up. Ugh. Hi. Hmm? Did you hear that? You might have missed it if your volume wasn't high enough or you don't have headphones on, but the sounds of shotguns being cocked are permeated all throughout the scene. It's a blink and you'll miss it little touch that doesn't really add anything substantial, but it does provide a sense of personality. And that's one thing Sonata is all about. The good times end abruptly for the cats, however, when a stooge from the ATF decides to pay them a visit. William Collins, ATF. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Let me guess. This isn't about the alcohol or the tobacco. Seems that Washington has been smuggling guns, and he needs Rally and Minnie Mae to find out where they are. I really didn't want to resort to an investigation. Just, what are you saying? All these firearms, you must have a Class 3 license, right? Huh? You don't have one? <sighs> and you, Mae Hopkins. Hmm? Illegal explosives, violation of dangerous material handling laws... What?! You mean we can't have anti-aircraft weapons and grenades?! I thought this was America! 
This is where we get our first taste of the bad side of Sonata. He loves his weapon so much that he will bend logic and narrative cohesion to make it fit. Gunsmith Cats is set in Chicago, expressly for the purpose of having a setting where firearms are common. Japan has no Second Amendment, you see. And for all intents and purposes, the anime gets Chicago pretty right. Save for the unclogged freeways. Hey! What do you know about Chicago? What? You got a problem? Come at me, bro! <laughs> oh, your ass is crap! Sage! Sage! Ah, you hear that? That's the sound of me being right. Like most stories that are set in a country not of the storyteller's origin, there are some inconsistencies. Ignoring the biggest one, the notion of having Chicagoans speak in Japanese, the anime doesn't exactly ace the concept of firearms in America. Even if you were willing to give the anime some leeway and say it's just a dumb action show, you still can't look over the fact that this paints the stooge out to be a dolt. If he knows they have illegal weapons and explosives, why doesn't he want to know where they got them? Last time I checked, civilian outlets aren't supplied with grenades, landmines, and C4 by Factory Direct. The anime plainly states that our heroes are criminals, and dangerous ones too. But who could stay mad at Minnie Mae? Oh, she is so cute! Kawaii Desude! Strong armed to help nab Washington, Rally posts his bail on the deal that he leads her to where he's keeping his stash of weapons. The intrigue goes deeper when the stooge admits to his superior that he suspects there's a leak in the ATF that's allowing this gun running to go unrestricted. It's here that we run into Rally's intel source, Becky. I'll give you three guesses as to who's voicing Becky, it's Tiffany Grant. Rally. I thought we were going out to dinner! You and Meg can sit in the car while I run an errand. And after that, we can all get something to eat. Hey, do you need me to help you with anything? Just stay in the car. Uh, why should I? Oh, I see. You want me to keep an eye on her. <laughs> Bingo! Ah, now wait a second here! Ah! Slow down! I just realized our three lead heroines are all voiced by the same actresses in Devil Hunter Yoko. You've got company. How do you do? Azusa Kansaki, uh, Devil Hunter in training huh? at your service. <laughs> Miss Yoko is going to train me to chop demons. ADV, going green by recycling actors since 1998. Rally hits the scene and is led by Washington to a captured stooge, saying that in order for him to trust her, she's got to cap him. Oh, by the way, I'd like some proof that you've got the merchandise. No problem. I know. I've got a few pieces over here. Now here's a real handy little item. Come on, how about something a little more conventional? <laughs> Don't worry. Every crate in this whole warehouse is filled with guns. <laughs> oh, um, I'm, I'm sorry, people. Y you'd have to read the manga. Which I did! But it looks like this was all part of the plan, and Rally manages to get the upper hand. But there's still that pesky business of that warehouse filled with armed thugs that still needs taken care of. You know what? They don't trust you. Looks grim. It's too bad we can't grow some wings. Suit yourself. I don't intend to wear a halo anytime soon. What an optimist. You know, early ADV dubs were very hit and miss. File this one under hit. Yeah, there's some corny liberties the script takes with the dub, but in all honesty, the banter plays well with the characters. It can't help but feel a bit forced in some areas, but the charm's still there. Luckily for the anime, the gunfights need no kind of translation and are easily the best part of the show. There's a great sense of scene geometry and the usage of the environment is impeccable. Rally, look at back of you! Huh? Rally! You know what? The fan service is so unrepentant and blatant that I just love it. Actually, what really intrigues me about this is that because Rally's jacket is pinned to the rail, she winds up ripping her blouse off just to keep herself alive, realizing that her modesty isn't worth her freaking life. It's like she's saying, you know what? I don't care who sees my business. I like being alive. Rally! Idiot! <laughs> John. And 
man, the Leon S. Kennedy Award for Excellence in Fucking Physics right up its ass goes to... Rally Vincent for landing an impossible 20-foot drop in heels. <laughs> Though Washington has been nabbed, the danger is far from over, as it seems the man behind the gun running is making sure there are no loose ends, which means hiring an ex-KGB assassin. Miss Radnov? <laughs> it looks like the boss has another assignment for you. Hmm. For a separate fee, of course. Hmm. Who's the hit? Washington knows his number is up and calls for Rally and Minnie Mae and instructs them to give his watch to his daughter. His watch was on your daddy's wrist when they were shot down on that Hanoi. No! Bad reference! No biscuit! This watch is all I've got to leave behind. Rally, please. Time's up! Wait a second! We're not finished talking yet! No, I've heard enough. Huh? But you can't. Come on, May. Uh -huh. Rally? Oh. I was telling you the truth back there. Huh? You'll find out. But of course, I'm not gonna be around to say I told you so, am I? Yours was a modest role, Brett. But we shall never forget. Of course, Washington is right on the money as Molotov Cocktease finds him, and does what she does best. But not before she accidentally awakens Rally's inner Valkyrie bitch. until I have feasted on her soul! Now get me a gigolo! I must fuck the beast away. It turns out that the address is a fake, not to mention the watch as well, but the three girls figured that there has to be something else to it. I've got it! What? This is a secret code for a site on the network. Watch carefully. I'm going to type in the initials of the name, address, and phone number. Hmm. Hello. That's it. That's the picture Washington had on his monitor. Bingo. Now I'll type in the number on the back of the watch. Come on, come on, come on. <gasps> we did it! Oh, that's incredible, Becky! Thank you, misinformed 90s writing. But wait! It can't be that easy. <laughs> I knew it! They're falling right into the clutches of their subnet mask! Mark! I'm already ahead of you, Benny Boy, and it ain't looking good. Damn it! I hate this hacker crap! Tell me they haven't triggered their FTS server protocol. They have, and they're already caught in the firewall. If we can't find a suitable FTD, I park our entire topology is gonna be exposed! Type faster, you fuzzy bastard! We need more hack! Gabe! Gabe, I don't know if you're hacking or playing Tekken, but keep it up! If we slow down, then Rally and Minnie Mae are gonna... Wait, are we actually trying to hack for fictional characters? Wait a second. You're right. You're not even on the phone! What? <laughs> Wait a minute. You're not a man. You're a horse! I think we lost the plot here. The information leads Rally and Minnie Mae to a warehouse in Michigan that's holding all of the weapons seized during Washington's raid. But the scene goes tits up and quick. Making things worse is Molotov kidnapping Minnie during the skirmish. And the resulting car chase is ungoddamn believably great. Sure, it's bullshit that Minnie Mae and Rally came up with an escape maneuver that they timed to music for just such an occasion, but the resulting sequence is undeniably cool. I can easily place this scene in the top five best action scenes in anime and have no doubts in my mind whatsoever. Five, four, three, two, one, zero! No! Nice catch, 
watching. Wait for it. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Just like a Molotov to go down in flames. But not for long, it seems, as she's left a message for Rally on her car after being picked up by her contact with the police, Roy Coleman. She's a human murder machine, trained in every possible lethal skill. And until now, she's never failed to take out her assigned target. She's not a woman. She's a Terminator, Rally. Hmm. I don't see it. The girls have been invited to see State Senator Edward Haynes. Spoilers, he's the guy behind it all. And it seems the stooge here is being blocked out of the investigation by the higher-ups. But he's going nowhere with them. Excuse me, sir, but do you have any business with these two ladies? Look, I'm Bill Collins, an ATF investigator. I need their cooperation for an investigation. You don't have to show me your ID card. My orders are to not let anyone come near this house. Which is why you let him go near the house. At his wit's end, the stooge manages to come across some information that ties his boss to the leak. But it's too late. His boss has already been capped by Molotov. <gasps> It looks like the chief. What happened to him? Oh, nothing. He just got some light work done on his face. Nothing too radical. He's got a 9mm hole in his head, you moron! Well, Darwinism could be a swift and explosive process as the idiot manages to get himself and the stooge blown up. But not before they learn that Senator Haynes is behind it all. The explosion isn't enough to take out the stooge, who manages to make it in time to warn Rally and Molotov. Having it up to here with her, Rally goes mano y mano with the mad Russian. The resulting final battle with Molotov is just aces in my opinion. Save for one little detail. Rally's wounded but barely makes an escape thanks to a well-timed flashbang. How are the girls going to avoid Molotov? Rally, hold on. I'm doing alright. How about you? Hey, I'm doing just fine. I just wish I could use my hands. It's a good thing I already set up some traps in advance. Oh, fuck you, Minnie. When did you have any time to set up anything? Look at this. She wired an entire hallway with trip wires. Bull fucking shit. But you know what? I can forgive it. Because the anime earned it. And at the very least, the notion of Minnie Mae laying traps has the benefit of seeing Molotov get fragged good with a shrapnel trap. Boom! So, with the senator exposed and the day saved, all's well that ends well. But something doesn't seem right, does it? Ugh, come on, Fortunately, she was a little careless, too. <laughs> <laughs> Who leaves an axe in an ambulance? I mean, yeah, that's the second time this bitch has cheated death, but really, where the hell did she get that axe? Unfortunately for Molotov, her third win goes to waste as the stooge gives Rally an opening to plug her full of lead. She goes down for the count, and the show ends with a cityscape shot of Chi-Town. Gunsmith Cats is what all action anime aspires to be. Fun, creative, exciting, a little dumb, but otherwise a great time. Honestly, if you have a choice in which anime you make your debut performance in, you could do a hell of a lot worse. Well, I want to thank you all for joining me for Actor Appreciation Month, but it's time for us to resume normal operations with Venus Wars. Till next time. <laughs>Oh, one last thing. Uh, we are retroactively giving the Leon S. Kennedy Award for Excellence in Fucking Physics right up its ass to Sawa from Kite.
Long live your Lord High Regent Sage! Long live Benetopia! <laughs>